are more expensive, your dollar spends less. Your dollar has less value. And so if you've got 10 grand saved up, or 50 grand, 100 grand, or a million, the math is the same, the concepts are the same, your 10 grand spends differently next year, next year, and next year. Every year, your 10,000 you save up spends like 9,100, 8,300, 7,400. This isn't like a conspiracy theory, it's just gas. You just go look at how much did gasoline cost, how much did bread cost, how much did milk cost, how much did your clothes cost, how much did your phone cost, your shoes, your parking, everything. Just look at everything in your life, year after year, it's a little bit more expensive. If that happens, and you don't adjust, meaning you're not investing to keep up with the inflation, you eventually will fade away. Your bank account will fade away. The value of that 10 grand, going to 9,100, 8,200, 7,300, 6,500, is not a theory, it's just math and reality. And so you have to invest. The reason I'm so passionate about investing, and you think you can hear my voice, is you have to invest in order to create generational wealth. You have to invest, honestly, to survive. Over the course of time, if we keep growing at 7, 8, 9% inflation, year after year after year, it's going to be really hard to catch up if you're not deploying capital. Because your job, your career, is typically not giving you 7, 8, 9% a year in raises. Does that make sense? And so if you're making 20 bucks an hour, then 25, then 30, then 40, they're not making you get those jumps year after year. That's over three years, five years, and 10 years. So as you're increasing, if you're not catching up with inflation, mass and time compounds the bad way too. Meaning, if inflation keeps going this rate, year after year, and you don't catch up, it can hurt you. And so that's what I'm passionate about. There's two things that I think about on the low risk side. There's CDs, which are at your bank right now, which used to be like half a percent, which is basically nothing at your fees. But right now, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase, household naming legendary banks that could go bankrupt, really hard to do, and if they ever go bankrupt, they got a lot more to worry about in their society. These household naming banks are offering 4.5, 5.1, sometimes 5.5% to just put your money that's already in your bank account into your bank account. And just lock it up in a CD. You still have access to it, you can break your CD in case of fees, but the concept is if you have money saved up and you don't know what to do with it, at least do something to make back 4 or 5%. Is that fair? Your own bank is offering that, and a lot of household and banks are offering that right now. Will it always be like that? Who knows? But right now, the banks need a lot of capital, so they're willing to pay a lot more than ever before. And in those moments, if you have 5 grand, 10 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, again, the math is irrelevant, the concept is the same. If you have extra capital that you're not sure what to do with, at least do something safe. You're getting something back. Because you want to be fine with inflation. The other thing is what's called the S&P 500, which is the stock market, top 500 stocks. This is Qualcomm, Google, Netflix, a lot of companies we mentioned. Household name corporations and a lot of companies you don't even think about. You don't even think about General Electric. But General Electric is a bazillion dollar company. It's the actual number. <laughs> you don't think about Procter & Gamble, but every product in your household is owned by Procter & Gamble, from cereal to soap and everything between. These household name companies you either invest directly, which we'll talk about in a minute, or if you just say, hey, you know what, I'm going to invest in S&P 500 and buy some stock, it's an S&P 500, and just keep adding to it year after year. Again, people are like, whoa, the stock market, maybe dance a little crazy. The stock market goes up and down. You're right, I am a little crazy. However, I like math. Over the last 92 years, the S&P 500 has averaged 11.1%. This year, 24.2%. I have these numbers burned in my mind because it matters. Because they're not theories, it matters. You investing matters. You deploying capital matters. And I don't care if you got 200 bucks saved up, 1,000 bucks saved up, investing into yourself, like coming here to this laboratory, going to masterminds, that's important to level yourself up, and then extra capital deploying that matters. You have to be investing to fight with inflation. But the S&P 500 is something that you can keep adding into month after month, year after year, forever, and no matter what roller coaster's happening, you can bet on the fact that 
these 500 companies that are all multi-million dollar companies, over the course of time, will win. Some will lose, some will win, some will stay the same. But over the course of time, they return 11% a year. That's huge. All right, here's the bill. This is where there's three main topics. I'm going to be between 10 and 30% here. This is where most people are interested in. Here's three topics. Real estate, cash on businesses, and specific stocks. So on the stock side, just to wrap up stocks, as I mentioned a few times, there's 10 main stocks that I buy, and I don't really listen to the noise outside of that. Why? There's plenty of new companies, plenty of amazing companies that come and go. There's plenty of huge companies that could squeeze into my top 10 stocks, maybe number 11, 12, 13, but why would I do it when I already have 10 stocks that I believe in? That every single year, every single month, every single quarter, however I feel, I can buy more. Walmart, and Google, and Netflix, and Facebook, and Tesla. If these companies are tried and true for so many years, why would I have to listen to the noise? That's shiny objects in there. I don't want shiny objects in there when it comes to investing. I want to invest into things that I'm never going to sell. Raise your hand and be honest. Do you think that Apple, the company, will be here in five years? Why would I ever sell Apple stock? If I would have said eight years, or 10 years, or 20 years, you would have been on your head, right? Apple is a multi-trillion dollar company, and they're not slowing down. And so, in that theory, if I believe, and you believe, that Apple and Walmart will be here year after year, why would I sell it? And I can say that because I don't put large amounts in. That's the difference. If I were like, sell my kidney and put 100 grand in, yeah, I might need to sell it, right? Because I have too much on the line, it causes stress. But what if I put a thousand bucks, five hundred, five grand, two grand, over and over and over, over the course of time, and I just accumulated that Apple stock or that Walmart stock over and over and over? It's less stressful, and it can compound over the course of time, become more affordable. And I'm not all in on any one stock. Whether they're Walmart, whether they're Google, whether they're Tesla, bam, 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 thousand bucks here, two grand here, five grand here, whatever the number is for you, I'm just adding up. The thing that I want, the thing that I want is the stock, is the company itself. Does that make sense? I don't care if the stock's 100 bucks, 80 bucks, 140, it doesn't matter to me. I want to keep accumulating the company. I want to keep accumulating the stock. I want to bet on Mark Zuckerberg. I want to bet on Elon Musk. I want to bet on Jeff Bezos. Do you think Amazon's amazing now? Wait until the drones happen. Wait until they start doing the same big order. They do same big order now. Wait until they like, me saying Amazon, a drone would pop in right now. Because it's coming. He's ready for it. And so if you believe that Elon Musk is going to keep doing what he's doing, and you believe in Jeff Bezos year after year, and you believe in these multi trillion companies, you start to shift your mind about buying a little bit of stock. How many people shop on Amazon? You know, you got the next question, right? How many of you guys have stock? 40? It's not to make you feel bad, it's to make you think different. That makes sense? It's that you spend money, your family spends money, husbands, wives, kids, family, parents, everyone likes to buy Amazon, but you don't have to stop. When you know that everyone in your family buys on it, and your neighbors buy on it, and everybody in this room here is fire short, 3,000 people that you know spend money on it, and you don't even know a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, a thousand bucks, a stop. You have it right in front of you, because you don't need a stock broker anymore. You can go on Robinhood or E-Trade or any of these apps, and in seconds, buy stock. Seconds. On the real estate side, there's three main topics, but we're gonna have some of this natural expert, Paul Hatter, who might be a friend, somebody up here speaking about real estate after David Gottman. So I don't want to be teaching about real estate, we've got a guy that's done over a thousand real estate deals, and I've invested with him in the deals, like he's just a legend in space. And so when you have someone like Paul Hatter coming, I'm gonna skip the real estate part, I'll let Paul teach about that. Cash flow in businesses are compelling because if your friend is opening their seventh pizza restaurant or their seventh hair salon or their seventh dry cleaner or their seventh pest control, they're opening their seventh business, that's medium risk to low risk. If they're opening their first one, it's way over here in high risk, right? Remember what Jeff Hensler said? The first restaurant, zero to one million, super hard. First pest control facility, super hard. First landscaping company, super hard. I'm not saying you can't invest in it, that's really high risk. That can have high reward if you get it right. But someone opening their seventh one, 
Like, I didn't invest in Jeff until forever more, until he had 17 locations. And then I doubled down when he had 23. And I put more money when he had 26. Right? My risk is getting lower and lower because of the success of the business. You might find someone in your world that's really good at that. They're opening their seventh thing or their twelfth thing. You might want to buy a little bit of stock in their company. You might be able to be an angel investor and buy a piece of their company in a cash flowing business. Why does that have to be cash flow? Someone that's losing money opening multiple locations, it's hard for them to make money unless they sell. And most companies don't sell. But someone has a cash flowing business, has control, landscaping, dry cleaning, hair salon, etc. Those are interesting to put some money into. Whether you can afford 10 grand, 25 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, again, whatever that number is, it's interesting to invest in cash on businesses that have a proven track record because it's medium risk to low risk. The last part I'll talk about is on the high risk side angel investing and cryptocurrency. On the angel investing side, that's my passion. I'm angel investing in 43 companies because I want to have my shot at glory. If I get it right, I can have a huge win. And if I get it wrong or take some time, like I said, these things cover it. But when it hits, it hits big. Angel investments are things for you to look out for when you find someone that has a real company doing real things. And I reduce my risk. I only invest in companies now that are doing at least two million in sales. So I want them to be two to twenty million is kind of my sweet spot that I focus on. Why? Zero to one million, really hard. Going from twelve million to sixteen million, easy. We're just fixing some things, pouring some gas in the fire. Zero to one million, gas doesn't do anything because you're not going to be spark. That makes sense. And so I like to find companies now that have at least two million, four million, ten million type of sales. On the cryptocurrency side, there's a lot of noise out there. Over ten thousand different cryptocurrencies. But you should be thinking about things like Bitcoin and Ethereum. I've been investing in Bitcoin since 2014. You see all my social media posts installing the Bitcoin ATMs and casinos in Las Vegas. Ten years ago, it looked like I had three heads. Because you're like, oh, that's a Bitcoin. Ten years later, it was 340 bucks back then. Ten years later, literally last week, if you look at my phone, I still buy at 68000 So I was buying at 340 bucks, 200 times more expensive, and I still buy. Why? Because I want to buy the thing. I don't care about the price. If I believe in Bitcoin year after year, if I believe in 2014 when I was crazy, why don't I believe it now when it's finally mass adoption? Last thing, Prime. Prime is a dear friend of mine. He's in Steve Harbor. He's the one that helps me and a lot of my friends protect their assets. Prime is a corporate structure to help you figure out your taxes, accounting, LLCs, and everything in between. And so what's cool about Prime. Not fishing it, by the way. He's giving it to you for free. So a lot of you guys are going to be getting uh, an email or a text message from just because you bought tickets. And Prime is one of our sponsors for free. He's going to send you guys a free consultation. So if you're for a business owner or an entrepreneur or starting to make some money, then we'll do a free consultation with you to talk about tax strategies, how to save you money, your LLCs, and everything in between. Because what's important is when you hear what I'm talking about investing, there's one thing about making money. It's super important. Make as much money as you can in your main career, have side hustles, job, etc., to bring in that income. The next thing is, what I talked about, is investing money, right? That 40 40 20 principle. How do you invest money to stack up 5%, 9%, 20% each year? What Prime talks about is protecting money. Protecting money is critical. Because once you start to have assets and you've saved up 50 grand, 100 grand, 500 grand, a million, a gazillion, whatever the number is, you gotta really figure out your structures. How is my LLC and C corps work? How are my taxes working? How can I save five or ten percent here and there? Five or ten percent doesn't sound like a lot. But what if you're making hundred grand a year? Five or ten grand a year every year. What if you're making five hundred grand, a million? That's fifty grand, hundred grand, two hundred grand every year. And so, what's really important to me is as you're listening to everything I just said, think for yourself. When you, did you like when I talked about low risk, medium risk, or high risk, or do you want to be like me? Spread it all out into the 40, 40, 20 principle. My name is Dan Fletcher. I appreciate you guys. See you later.